Hey, what's going on my nerds and collectors alike? We are back at it again today, taking a look at the Star Wars The Black Series Mandalorian Wave Bo-Katan Kreese. Getting a closer look here, we can see her accessories. She's got her helmet, a couple of blasters, paint's looking pretty good. Says she's from the Star Wars Mandalorian line, Bo-Katan Kreese. Got your small parts, not for children under three years, even though it says four and up. So I guess if you're three, no. Hasbro. On the side of the package, you've got a nice image of Bo-Katan Kreese here. It says Bo-Katan again. On the top, you got your window to let light come through on the shelves. This side says Star Wars The Black Series. On the bottom, you can see that I got mine at a uh, Books A Million. So there's the sticker for $22.99. You also got your legalese unreadables and barcodes. On the back of the box, you got that same picture of Book Tan, but it's zoomed in. She is number 10 in the Mandalorian line. And it says, Bo-Katan Kreese. A gifted warrior, Bo-Katan Kreese, is a legendary Mandalorian. She refuses to align with the Empire's occupation of Mandalore. So if you've seen her in Mandalorian Season 2, you know her arc is trying to get the Darksaber and wanting to form a uh, small Mandalorian rebellion to go take back Mandalore from the Empire. So let's get Bo-Katan cracked open and see what she's about. Alright, so here we have Bo-Katan out of her packaging here. And as you can see, she's holding the Darksaber, which we'll get into here in a minute. So taking that out of here and getting a closer look at the figure. Getting into some details, you can see the Night Owl logo painted on her helmet. And she's got some added scuffs and dings and some paint chipping, just because this is after uh, Return of the Jedi. So she's a little worse for wear. Had some extra battles going on. She's got the Night Owl logo kind of chipped on her shoulder there with some extra rust scuffing. Her best scar has got a little bit of wear and tear on the edges there. On that side, the Night Owl is looking a little bit better. You can see she's got some scuffing on the painted armor here. She's got scuff detail on her knees and her shins as well. Her backpack's actually looking pretty good, so I guess her jetpack is uh, either new or she's been keeping that pretty well protected whenever she's fighting. You can see that behind those shins, she's got some nice leather boots sculpted with straps coming around there, and that is actually a different shade of paint. You can see the bottom of the boot, so these look like they are half chaps with some boots over top, or not over top, with the chaps over top of the boots. Boots are lighter brown, and then she's got shin armor on top of there. And then knee pads there. Underneath her holsters, she has some Beskar hip plates. Why they're not on the front of her thighs? I assume mobility, since the female Mandalorians like to jump around a lot and seem more agile. So they have that little bit of extra protection on the side there, while still being able to move around as much as they want to. Looking on this side here, she has a gauntlet with the Whistling Bird feature, just like Mando has. And taking her helmet off, we have Bo-Katan's face. A little bit glossy. I might hit that with a uh, coat of dull coat, but that actually looks really good. Very, very close to the actress's likeness, which is also very nice because... As you guys probably know, the voice actress for Bo-Katan from the Clone Wars and the Rebels TV series is the same actress who plays Bo-Katan on the Mandalorian TV show. Which is always good to see that she got to come back and play Bo-Katan at least one more time. You can see that she's got her Beskar headband there. Um, I know these little divots on there are supposed to have little yellow lights in them, but... I'll probably have the helmet on her most of the time, so I'm not too, too worried about it. They got her hair. It's a little bit brighter than I remember it being, but looks pretty good. It's got some nice detail on there. Nicely sculpted. Getting into articulation, Bo-Katan has 
a uh, double ball joint for her neck. So there's a ball joint at the top of the head, and there's also a ball joint down in the neck. So she can look up that far. She can look down that far. Her head tilts to the sides. Pretty good. And obviously can swivel. Her shoulders go up 90 degrees. Um, this torso piece actually is a rubber overlay, so she has butterfly joints underneath that give a nice extra range of motion. Her arms rotate 360. There's a single joint at the elbow, but it is the Star Wars Black Series signature deep cut, so it can bend past 90. And there's also a swivel at the elbow. Her wrists are both hinged up and down because she is a dual wielding blaster character, so that's always good to see. They also are on a swivel that can go 360. There is a diaphragm joint underneath the rubber inlay, so she can bend back quite a bit actually, that's pretty good. Bend forward just a little bit less, but she can still crunch. Especially with uh, all that armor on her, and even underneath that belt, you can see there's another Beskar plate. That's pretty good that she can crunch that far. And she can obviously turn side to side. So do whatever you need there. And there's also the ability to swivel. Her legs kick forward about 90 degrees. Always good, so they go all the way up. They actually have a decent amount kick back. They can kick out. Sorry about that. Little over 45. There is a swivel at the thigh, which is what the best guard plate is attached to there. So the best guard plate can move with that. And then they have the single jointed knees, but because it is a deep cut, they do go past 90. And there's also a swivel at the knee. Her ankles. Kick down that far, kick up that far, and of course there's an ankle pivot. Excellent. So her articulation, especially considering she's an armored character, is very very good, which is always good to see on a character such as herself. We all know Bo-Katan is a very agile Mandalorian. So getting into her accessories here. Uh, her jetpack does come off, which is a nice tiny sculpt here. You can see a little rocket, and uh, I'm pretty sure that is a radio antenna for comms and their helmets. And that's got the nice matching blue paint on there. The Beskar paint actually has a little bit of shine into it. It looks like it's kind of got some glitter in that paint just to give it a little bit of extra shine, which looks very good. And that's just attached to her back with standard peg. And that holds in there really well. I don't feel like it's going to fall out at all. You can even support the whole figure's weight with it. So that's always good. She comes with her blaster here, which each blaster can be stored in a soft rubber holster on her hips. And these are free-floating, so they'll get out of the way for whatever poses you're doing. And these are just molded in a nice gray plastic. Kind of light, so it gives off the appearance of being kind of Beskar. And there's a brown grip picked out in paint there. And as you can see, they fit in her hand just fine. She has no problem getting her finger on the trigger. They look real good when she does it. And she's easy to pose with. And these just slide into the holster really easily. There's a little hole in the bottom. So just push it down until the square part of the uh, under barrel of her blaster there pokes through, and you know you've got it in position. Getting to her helmet, sliding that back on. You can see that covers her face just fine. You don't even have any chin. And it doesn't actually make her head look ginormous like some helmets from the Black Series do, so this is actually a pretty good look for her. Helmet looks good. And if you've seen my Deluxe Boba Fett review, she has the same feature where the Targeting visor can come down. 
There's actually no stopper, so if you feel like turning it to the other side, you can. It goes up there. Looks good while it's down. Stays in position, and it's nice and tight. And just to look up into the helmet, you can see it barely peeks through at all, so there is no rub on the helmet, so no worry of paint wear. And going to the Darksaber, which is her ultimate goal throughout the season, was to acquire the Darksaber and have a claim to Mandalore. That fits in her hand perfectly. She's got a nice tight grip on that. Not going to let it go. She can pose around with that. So if you want your Bo-Katan to have the Darksaber, you can have her with the Darksaber. So we will put Bo-Katan Kreese and compare her to some... Mandalorian counterparts here. So here we have Den Djarin, uh, currently the rightful ruler of Mandalore, with not only the Beskar Spear, but also the Darksaber in his possession. I'm estimating that in Season 3, we might see a clash between these two characters, or at least a small conflict. And we also have Paz Vizsla from Season 1 of The Mandalorian. You can see that both characters are actually a good bit taller than her, Paz Vizsla being almost an entire head taller than her, and much bulkier. But it's always cool to have some extra Mandalorians together. So we'll get those guys out of here. And with some Mandalorian supporting characters, here is part of her squad when they invaded Gideon's ship, Cara Dune. And the man, the myth, the legend, Boba Fett. I'm very excited to see... If we get a uh, clean painted and black skirted Boba Fett for the Book of Boba Fett series, I am very much looking forward to having that kind of look. But they look good together. Boba Fett's a decent bit taller. Cara Dune is actually about the same height as she is, so that's pretty cool. Getting them out of here. Here she is with Moff Gideon, the man who stole her Mandalorian throne. You can see he is just a little bit taller than she is. So that's very cool to see. And just as an extra, because Season 7 of The Clone Wars was fantastic, here is Ahsoka Tano from Season 7, the person who first helped her reclaim Mandalore. And they look pretty good together. Ahsoka's actually just a little bit taller because of her head tails, but you can see that she's actually supporting... Or not supporting, sporting, sorry guys, a similar Mandalorian headband as Bo-Katan does. And fun fact for any of you who didn't know, uh, this outfit actually does have some Beskar underplates on it because the Mandalorians trusted Ahsoka Tano with some Beskar. So Ahsoka Tano was technically the first Jedi in centuries to have been given Beskar by the Mandalorians out of trust. And who better to trust than Ahsoka Tano, you know? She's awesome. So all in all, Bo-Katan, excellent addition to the collection. Her articulation's fantastic. She looks really good. She can fit into multiple displays, be that if you want a Clone Wars display with her, if you want to do Rebels, if you want to do Mandalorian displays. She fits in everywhere. She can hold the Darksaber. She's got everything she needs, jetpack, helmet, blasters. Definitely a good pickup, and overall, I love the figure. So before we go, I do want to say that this channel and all of the content on it is not for children under the age of 13 years old. YouTube guidelines, you guys know the drill. Stay safe, everybody. Hope you have a good one.